Yes, I'm playing here with the old man. <laughs> Mr. No, Mr. Hey, oh, he love, he love. That's pops. He, I can call him. So is, is, is that the striker trio? The thing? Golden Striker trio. Yes, myself, Mr. C, and uh, Donald Vega, who's a fantastic pianist. Yeah, yeah. The first time I came to this festival was back in 1990. I came through here with Harry Connick Jr. And I've come here before. I mean, after that, with several other people. I came through here with uh, Diana Crawl, came through here with Benny Green, I came through here with Ron Carter, I think two other times. So this will be the third time. I've never come here with my own band, so hopefully one of these days I'll be able to do that before I become too old and, and uh, bec before I become old and arthritic. <laughs> wow. Then what? you go to singing. Huh? Then you can go to singing. Yeah, well, to yeah, well, I, st I still got some more choruses to play. Still, yeah. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I. Um, I, 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 I will be here with Ron Carter. Oh, where do I start? He's an amazing individual, man. I first heard Ron Carter play the bass when I first got into jazz. I, I got into jazz at the age of 12. And uh, I think the first record that I heard him on was on that Giblet Gravy record, George Benson. George Benson, Herbie Hancock, that, hey, man, there's a recording on there, a, a, a song on that record, Billy's Bounce, with uh, Billy, uh, Billy Cobham, George Benson, Ron Carter, Herbie Hancock, and Johnny Pacheco plays percussion on, uh, on that tune. The thing that was so intriguing about, about Ron Carter was how his presence on any record, man, everything, no matter whose record it is, at some point, because his personality is so strong, you can't help but listen to what he's doing. And at some point, your attention is going to start to focus on him. And that's what happened when I heard him with Wes Montgomery on those Wes Montgomery records, on the George Benson record, on the stuff that, I, that he did with Miles, uh, because his personality is just so strong, man. And I remember when I first uh, listened to, that, uh, to Miles Davis, that, the first record that I got by Miles was uh, the Plug Nickel recording. You know that record? Mm -hmm. I'm sure you do. And at the time, being young, being young and naive, I'm listening to Herbie Hancock play all of this crazy, weird harmonic stuff. And I'm like, man, this piano player is really out there. He's, he's cool, and which he was. But having played with Ron, I've been playing with Ron off and on now for almost 20 years. I really believe that the harmonic direction was instigated by him because you just, you know, his, 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 some of the things that he does, I, I mean, why would he do that? How did he come up with that? And uh, he told me something about that man, uh, and I've said this in the past. Um, he said that one of the things that made that band so special was, you know, first of all, you had these five musicians. The level was just through thin, they listened to each other. They listened and they trusted each other. He said that was what made that band so great. Uh, if he played something that was different than what he played before on the same tune, if it was different, nobody cared. Herbie, Wayne, Tony, they trusted him. Everybody trusted each other. And when you have trust in a band, Nothing, ha you don't have to try to make anything happen. Everything will take care of itself, man. And that was one of the things that I learned from playing with him because, and I played with some really great bass players. I spent a lot of time with Ray Brown. I played with uh, Milton Hinton, played with a few, man. But with a guy like Ron, you just can't listen to him on a superficial level. You have to really listen. And people always say, well, man, it must be a real challenge to play with Ron. I really despise that word challenge when it comes to music because it's not sport, it's not a fight, it's, music is engaging. And if you're open to the possibilities, you become engaged in what's happening. So um, it taught me how to really listen. And he, Ron is so funny, he told me one time <laughs> that one of the things that really bugged him was uh, that people on the front line, namely horn players or whoever else, they don't really listen. You may, they treat the rhythm section like it's a Jamie Abersall practice tape. This is what he said. He said, man, you know, I don't, I don't like that, man, you know. I don't like that. You know, Ron talks about that real fast clip. And he was right. So 
And when I first joined his band, we talked, we had some conversations about listening. Because I, you know, I was used to playing a certain kind of way, you know. But it made me, made me think differently. The first time we played together was, because uh, I had met Ron, the first time I saw him play live was back in the 80s uh, in Atlanta, Georgia, at uh, this place called the Variety Playhouse. It was a double bill. Joe Pass came out and played solo, played a solo concert. Then after that, Ron Carter and Jim Hall played a duo concert. And that's the first time I saw uh, Ron Carter live. That's the first time I saw Jim Hall live too. Yeah, it's the first time I seen Joe Pass live. So I was like, yeah, this is pretty cool. And I shook Ron Carter's hand after that. You know, he didn't, you know, we didn't talk, but I just shook his hand. And I was like, wow, this is really cool, man. So I um, saw him play again in New York at the Knickerbocker with James Williams. Shook his hand again. He didn't, he didn't remember me from Atlanta. I didn't try to make him remember me. I just wanted to just get close and hope and pray that some of that greatness or something would rub off. Sweat or something, <laughs> you know. A couple of coins. A couple of coins. So back in 1995, Robert Altman did this movie, Kansas City. You remember that movie, right? Uh, Steve Bernstein was here. I was talking. Oh, oh Lord. <laughs> Him? <laughs> no, nah, he's cool, man. <laughs> Steve. Um, so the way, I got, I got to tell you the story. I get uh, my guitar and luggage out of a uh, baggage claim. So I go out to the curb and I'm waiting on the van to come pick us up, right? The van comes to pick me and uh, I think it was Olu Dara and a couple of other guys. He was the trumpet player. Yeah, you know Olu. So they had picked Ron Carter up from another terminal. He's sitting in the van. So I'm in the back of the van putting my stuff in, and we were laughing and talking, me and a few other guys. And so all of a sudden we hear this, we hear this voice, Russell, hurry up, man, we gotta go. And I looked and it was Ron. <laughs> he kind of like barked at me. But I was like, man, Ron kind of knows my name? This is pretty cool. So we get in the car, and I sit next to him. So I start cracking my knuckles, and Ron uh, Carter hates when you crack your knuckles, man. So, and so he said, Russell, don't do that. So he kind of grabbed me, grabbed me by the throat, like just kind of pretending like he was choking me. Don't do that. I, I, I can't. I, don't do that. So I said, okay. I said, Man, this guy, <laughs> he's pretty deep. So, uh, but I'm sitting next to my hero because, I mean, Ron Carter's a titan. We all know this. He's prickly, but once you get to know him, lovable guy, man. So we get to the hotel and everybody was kind of, you know, which we're checking in and every, us, a lot of us youngsters, we're looking at Ron, but we were kind of intimidated because he's a very stoic, you know, you know, he's, he's like, he's, he's like, he's old school. He's like a, like a, like a principal, like a school principal. So we were like, man, that's Ron Carter. So I got over my shyness. I said, look, screw it. I got to say something to this guy. So I walked up to him. I said, Mr. Carter, man, you are my hero and you're on my list of people to play with. You know what he said to me? He said, well, give me a call sometime and get me off your list. <laughs> and that's when I knew, I said, okay, he likes me in school. So, you know, we, um, the rest of the time we were in Kansas City, you know, in the city of Kansas City doing the movie, we would have these talks throughout the day and we had dinner, me, him, and Nicholas Payton, we had dinner, and you know, and just listening to him talk and talk about music, just talk about anything, it was just so fascinating because, you know, he, Ron, he, he can take you on a ride, man, just, just listen to what he has to say, there's a lot of information there. Hi, I'm Lewis Nash, and for more interviews, go to jazztimes.com.